Okay, another distribution in the row is the hypergeometric probability distribution. So, hypergeometric probability distribution is another type of discrete probability distribution. So, more or less, hypergeometric probability distribution is more similar to binomial distribution. But once again, in binomial distribution, as I have already discussed, that the trial will be independent. But in hypergeometric, the trial will be dependent. There will be some dependency on each and dep uh, on each dependent variable. There will be some dependency of probabilities on one another. For example, the dependent and independent, I just want to give you another example that further to clarify the concept of dependent and independent. For example, if we have a box, we have three balls in that box. One is black, one is yellow and one is red. If I take one ball from it, the probability of any one ball, maybe it will be black, maybe it will be white or it will be yellow, the probability will be 1 by 3. If I put it back in the box, then this trial is with replacement trial and in with replacement trial, the trial are, are independent. But if I put this ball outside, and then I want to calculate the probability for another ball. So now in the box we have only two balls. The probability of the next ball which I am going to take out from the box will be 1 by 2. So the first ball probability was 1 by 3. The second ball probability is 1 by 2. And the third ball probability is certain it will be 1. So now in this case the probabilities of each trial are depending one another. If the first ball is a red ball the probability of red ball is 1 by 3. Uh, 1 by 3. The probability of the second bar will be 1 by 2. But if this is not the scenario, then in that will be the scenario of with replacement. And with replacement, for example, if I took a ball, the probability is 1 by 3, I will put it back and then again randomly I will choose another ball. So in this case, the probabilities are all independent. All the probabilities will be same because we repeating it and we put the ball back into the box. So in hypergeometric distribution, which is similar to probability uh, binomial distribution but in hyper geometric distribution these are the key differences the trial are not independent it's mean the trial will be dependent on one another the first probability will be depending on the second probability this third probability will, de will be depending on the first and second probability probability of success change from trial to trial so that is why if the probabilities are depending on one another just like I mentioned the example of the box, the first probability ball taking the first probability of the first ball taking 1 by 3, if we put it back in the, then the probability will not be changed. But if we not put it back in the box, then the probability will be changed and the probability of success change from trial to trial. So th this is a very simple uh, difference between binomial and hypergeometric distribution. More or less they are behaving same. If you calculate the values of hypergeometric, if you calculate mean variances of hypergeometric and binomial, the values will not be too, uh, too much change from one another. But you need to understand that in the hypergeometric distribution, the trial are not independent, but the trial will be depending on one another. Consider taking a sample from a population and testing each member of a sample for detail. Do this sampling without replacement. So in this case, when you using without replacement. So once again, I am repeating my example again. Without replacement means you are not putting, putting, putting back into the box. When you are not putting back, for example in your class, if I want to select one president, one secretary. So if I choose one person in your class as a president, that person will not be count again in the selection process. Because when we choose that person as a president, then we will not put it back. That same person will not be a president and at the same time he, she will not be a secretary. So that is why we will take him or her out from the class and then we will choose start selection for the secretary. So this is called without replacement. We will not replace the, in the box example, example, we will not replace the bar in the box. In the class example, we will not replace, we will not put the person back, we will not enter the person back into the class. So use hypergeometric distribution if experiment is binomial. But sampling, oh, okay, this is another identification. If you are confused that what should we need to do? We need to use binomial distribution or we need to use hypergeometric probability distribution. So this is another indicator. If the, sam but if the sampling is without replacement, 
Use hypergeometric distribution of experiment is binomial, but sampling is without replacement from a finite population where small n, small n mean, this is population n and this is sample n. When you divide sample n, sample size with the population size, and if it is more than 0 0.05, then you need to use hypergeometric distribution. So these are some indicators which show you that if the trial are not fixed, if the trial uh, if the success change from trial to trial and if the uh, experiment is dependent, not independent. If the trial are not dependent, if the trial are not independent, then in that case you will use hypergeometric distribution. Similarly to the binary distribution, hypergeometric distribution, hyper probability distribution have also four properties. Number of trials will be fixed, just like in binary distribution. Each trial has only two possible outcomes, success and failure. So once again, these two properties are similar to the binomial distribution, but the other two properties are not same. The other two properties are totally changed from the binomial distribution. In binomial distribution, trial are independent, but in hypergeometric distribution, trial are dependent. Probability of success in the binomial will not be changed. In the whole process, in the whole game, probability of success will be same. For example, if you throw a coin, probability of head will always be 1 by 2. It will not be changed. Probability of success will be, but in, in the hypergeometric, it will be changed from trial to trial. So that is why with due to these two different properties, you need to identify hypergeometric probability distribution and then you need to use this probability distribution function. Where k, k is the number of unit of one kind classified as success, just like we use p per uh, classification for success in binomial, we will use k. X represents the number of variables, n minus k, which represent another classified as failure. So if k is success, n minus k will be considered as a failure. And n minus x is n the sample size minus the random variable. And this term is the same. Where px probability of x success in n trial. So the most important thing you need to remember that the first two properties are same as binomial distribution, but in hypergeometric distribution. The trial will be with out replacement, but binomial in binomial, the trial will be with replacement. In binomial, the trial will be independent. In hypergeometric, the trial will be dependent. And the number of trial will be same in binomial, and the number of trial will be changed from, from trial to trial in the hypergeometric distribution. I'm going, I'm just going to show you a very simple example. A large store places its last 15 clock radios in a clearance cell. They have 15 clock radios and they put it in the cell. Unknown to anyone. Now, among those 15 clock radios, 5 radios are defective. But nobody knows. Only the owner of the shop knows that there are 5 defective. The customer knows nothing. If a customer tests 3 different clock radios selected at random, for example, if a customer wants to buy 3 clock radios and if he choose randomly any 3 from those 15, now the question is, what is probability? of x number of defective radio in a sample. So now the first property that there are two possible outcomes. The radio will be effective or the radio will be defective. The radio will be working or the radio will not be working. If a customer tests three different clock radio selected at random, what is the probability number of defective radio in the sample? So now this is hypergeometric. Why? Because, because the, the trial is without replacement. Why without replacement? Because when he choose, when he, she choose one radio from those 15, he, she will not put it back, but he randomly select and he take it. He will not count. For example, when we take, he take one radio, the remaining radios are 15. So now he, she will take another radio. When he take, when he, she take another radio, the remaining radios will be 13. When he, she take another radio, the remaining radio will be 13. So this trial is without replacement. He, she not put in back while selecting a radio. So this is the identification that this is not a binomial distribution. So from this specific indicator, we just decide that we will use hypergeometric probability distribution. So we have five defective radios. We will denote defective with k and the remaining n minus k. Total we have 5 plus 10 n. So this is the total and he, she want to buy 3. And so the sample which he select, 
is 3. So now they want to construct probability distribution function for these radios. So now there is a chance that among those three radios, they will be all working. So in that case, X represent defective radios. When it's all working, that means there is no defective radio. So the K is 5, 5 radio, 0, X is 0, it means no defective, N minus K is 10, and 3 because N is 3, 3 minus 0 divided by N C N, 15 C 3. So this will be the answer. If there is only one, if there is only one defective radio, so this will be the probability. 5, 1, K is 5, 1, 10, N minus K is 10. Now, N is 3 minus 1. So, 3 minus 1 is 2, 15 C 3. So, this will be the probability. If there are two defective, maybe there is a chance that all three one are defective. There is a chance that two are defective. Maybe there is a chance that only one is defective. Maybe there is a chance that no one defective. So, at this way, we will calculate all these probabilities. So, if all three are defective, all three which they buy from the store, because the owner only know that there are five defective radios. So, if all three are defective, 5C3, 10, N minus K is 10, others C, C, 0, Y0, because N minus X, so 3 minus 3, 0, 15C3, so 5 by 4, 5, 5, so this will be the probability. There is another example. In this question, they are asking you, they not even show you that use binomial or use hypergeometric, but you will use your logical intuition, you will use the properties which I already discussed in great detail. Then when you will be able to use hypergeometrics, hypergeometric distribution and when you will be using uh, binomial distribution. So when the trial are without replacement, and without replacement trial, you need to use hypergeometric. If the trial are with replacement, in with replacement, the trial are independent. In without replacement, the trial are dependent. So when the trial are independent, in that case, you need to use binomial. When the trial are without replacement, it's mean the probabilities of one element depending on another. So this is a without replacement. We not put it back. In that case, we need to use hypergeometric. So for selection without replacement, we will use dependent trial concept. Therefore, we will use hypergeometric distribution. We have 7 bar are drawn from a bag containing 5 white, 4 maroon, 6 red and 5 orange bar. So, how many total? 5 plus 4, 9, 9 plus 6, 15, 15 plus 5, 20. So, our n is 20 and how many balls they drawn? So, n is equal to 7 and how many because they are asking you what is the probability distribution of the number of white balls? So, how many white balls you have? 5. So, k is equal to 5 and the other remaining n minus k. So, n is 20, 20 minus 5 is 15 and small n is 7. So, because the trial is without replacement, without replacement mean the probabilities are depending on one another. So, in this case, we will use the concept of hypergeometric probability distribution and we know the hypergeometric distribution, probability distribution function is kx n minus k n minus x divided by capital N C n. So, we will put because how many white bar you have? We have 5 white bar and x will be start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because 7 bar are drawn from a bag containing 5 white, 4 maroon, 6 red and 5 orange bar. What is the probability distribution of the number? Because in those 7 bars, there is a chance that there will be no white bar. Because we have only white bar. Maybe in those seven balls, four let's suppose are maroon and three red. Ah, let's suppose six red and one orange. Or ah, five orange, one red. So a lot of combination exist. But in this case, how we will calculate when x is equal to zero? Zero mean when there is no white bar. So we know k is five, five zero, fifteen, n minus k is fifteen. Now n is 7, so 7 minus 0 divided by 20 C7. So in this case, this will be the probability. Similarly, if there is only one white ball among those 7, so 5 C1, 15 C6, 15 C6 for how? 7 minus 1, okay, and 5, 5 will not be changed. So in this case, this will be the probability. If there are only two white ball, so k is equal to 5, x is 2, 15, and 7 minus 2 will be 5. 
20 by 7. So at this rate, we will calculate these probabilities. Now they are asking you find mean and variance in each case. So you people know that the mean and probability distribution is summation x into px. So x this into this, this into this, 2 into this, 3 into this. So at this way, summation x into px, so this will be the mean, 1.78. Variance of x, we can write it e x square. So, how we will calculate e x square? e x square is equal to x square into p x because e x is summation x into p x. So, if I write 2 at this place, if I write 2 at this place, so it will be summation x square into p x. That is why this is 1. So, that is why at this place it is 1. So, summation e x square will be summation x square into p x. So, 4.095 minus 1.78 whole square. So, our variance will be 0 0.920. This is the case of hypergeometric distribution when the trial are without replacement because the trial are depending on one another. The de probabilities are depending on one another. Now, in order to solve without re with replacement, in with replacement, the trial will be independent. The success probability will not be changed. So, when the success probability is not changed, and when the trial are independent, and when the trial are with replacement, then in that case we need to use binomial distribution. So, for with replacement, the trial will be independent, therefore we will use binomial distribution. N is 7 by alpha, so N will be 7, probability of white. So, how many white we have? 5 out of 20. So, 1 over 4 is the probability of success. Failure, if, the, if, if among in 7, if it is not white ball, so 1 minus probability of white ball, 1 minus 1 over 4 is equal to 3 by 4. And you people know very well because in my previous lecture, I already discussed in great detail binomial distribution. The probability distribution function of binomial is nx, p power x, q power n minus x. So, now we will construct the probabilities p is equal to 0 when there is 0 white ball, so 7 c0 into 1 over 4 probability of white bar power 0 because there is no 0 there is 0 white bar 3 by 4 power 7 minus 0 7 so this will be the probability if there is only 1 white bar so 7 c1 1 over 4 power 1 3 by 4 power 7 minus 1 now because x is equal to 1 now so 0 0.311 and in this way we will calculate all these probabilities in the next step, they are asking to calculate mean and variance. So, x into px because ex is equal to summation x into px. So, in the next step, 0 will be multiplying with this. 1 will be multiplying with 0 0.311. 2 will be multiplying with 0 0.311. So, when we add all this column, that is why we will write it summation x into px. So, the mean will be 1.74. So, the mean a binomial and the mean of hypergeometric will be same. If there is a minute, maybe there will be a minute differences, but most likely it will be more similar with the mean of hypergeometric. Similarly, we will calculate variance of x. The formula of variance is summation x square minus mean square. So, you people know that e x square is e x square is x square is summation x square into px. Okay. So, when we add this, it will give us summation x square into px. When you put this and when you take the variance of 1.74, 1.74. So, your variance will be 1.33. So, in this way, you will calculate the mean and variance of the binomial and hypergeometric distribution. So, I hope from this example you understand the main concept of binomial distribution and the hypergeometric distribution. So, there are two properties there are which are different from hypergeometrics. In, in binomial, the trial will be fixed. In binomial, the trial will be changed from trial to trial uh, in hypergeometric. In binomial, the, the trial will be with with replacement in, uh, in hypergeometric, it will be uh, without replacement. In hypergeometric, it will be without replacement. In binomial, it will be with replacement. In binomial, the trial will be independent. In hypergeometric, it will be dependent. Okay. Just like uh, I have already discussed the mean and variance formulation for the binomial distribution, hypergeometric distribution have their own formulation. So, if you people know 
these things from its specific data you not need to construct the whole just like in the previous example i construct the, the probability distribution and then from from the probability distribution we calculate mean just like e x is equal to summation x into p x so first we we need to calculate this similarly for variance of x which is e x square minus e x whole square which is a little bit difficult in order to calculate but if you people know this formulation it will be very easy to solve it will be very easy to calculate mean and variance of specific question for example in the previous uh, uh, slides we have already solved this seven ball are not from a bag containing five white four maroon six red and five orange ball what is the probability distribution for the number of white ball if the selection consider without replacement find mean so mean the selection is without replacement so it's a binomial distribution so the most important thing you need to calculate because white ball we have white which are five which is equal to k and n minus k which is 15 which are others ball okay and the total total are 20 which is n and how many ball they are selecting n is equal to 7 so we know all these from this question so now you can easily calculate by using this formula n is 7 into k so k is 5 Five white ball because they are asking what is the probability distribution of the number of white ball. So white ball are the success which denote with k and not success means failure is n minus k which is fifteen. So five n is twenty. So one point seven four or one point seven five which is very near. This is round number. So the mean of this and the mean in the previous will be same. So you can also calculate mean with this. Variance formula is n minus n. So we know capital N is twenty minus seven, twenty minus one into N is seven into K is five by twenty one minus five by seven. Variance of X thirteen by nineteen into thirty five by twenty into two by seven. So at this way you can easily calculate the mean variance and standard deviation of this hypergeometric distribution. So I hope now you understand binomial and hypergeometric distribution. Why hypergeometric distribution is different from binomial? so you not need to be confused if i give you some specific example in exam you need to understand these two main different properties of binomial and hypergeometric distribution thank you